Salut and welcome to House of Bazaar, a place where all are seen and all are welcomed, a space where we speak about spirituality and life and how those two things meet. My name is Rashidi and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are going to speak about altars and how we can use them in our practices, how you can incorporate them into your daily life, and how you can use them to connect with the divine spirit, the your ancestors, your spirit guides, and the energy that is around you. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. Well, first, what is an altar? An altar is a sacred space in your space, or a, a or a place where you choose to connect with spirit, or worship, or pray, or whatever your spiritual practice is at the moment. But before you set up an altar, you have to know that you are first the divine altar. If you are not taking care of your, taking care of yourself, then anything that you try to manifest at your altar, uh, the spirit that you are trying to connect with or the energy that you are trying to connect with, that, that passage won't be very clear because you aren't really clear. So drink your water, make sure you're taking care of yourself, uh, keep yourself healthy, just make sure that you're at least hydrating yourself and taking care of yourself before you go to this space. Your space of residence is your is your primary or your first altar. If your house is dirty, if you have things growing in corners of your room or of your kitchen or whatever, and you're trying to set, set up an altar, spirit isn't going to connect with that. It's like, well, I don't even want to enter the space that you're trying to call me into. So make sure that you're taking care of your space first. That is the first practice. If you can maintain a space, if you can try to keep a clear mental space, then when you create that physical altar, all of those channels will be open. So yeah, make sure that you're taking care of your physical space first. Third, how to set up an altar. You don't really need anything to set up an altar because our ancestors and the people that came before us didn't have much. Or even if they did, they didn't have all of the trinkets and things that we have now nowadays in, in today's society. So you don't need anything in order to manifest or communicate or, or just like uh, take a moment for yourself. You don't need any physical anything. Um, so know that. So if you are in a space where maybe your spiritual practice is something that is demonized or something that is criticized a lot, or maybe you are too young to even um, purchase or like try to have your own sacred space, know that you don't need any of those things. But if you can, um, if you are trying to do something like ancestor divination, or if you're just trying to call on any spirits, just have water. Water is life. Water is the thing that we need in order to move. So why wouldn't you think that the energies that you're trying to call on, why wouldn't they need that too? So first water, second, a candle. Whatever candle you can find. Um, like I said, our ancestors didn't always have a candle. So sometimes it was just their thoughts. So if you can have a white candle, if you can have just a, a clear candle, that is really fine, but if all you can afford or all you have around you in your house right now is a Christmas scented candle from 2017, that's also okay. Your intention is what matters. Um, and third, I think that you need to have some kind of writing tool um, or, yeah, or a piece of paper or something, something that you can write your thoughts down on. So even if you don't have a spiritual practice yet, maybe this is just the space that you use to journal or the space that you use to pray or whatever the case may be. But if you can document those things, that is always great. But if you have a more advanced level of, of access, let's say, or the, I don't know if that makes sense, but if you have more, more accessibility to other things, um, I think that it's always great to have all of the elements represented on your altar at the at the bare minimum. So you can have a feather for air, or you can have an incense for air. You can have a plant or a leaf or something like that for earth. You can have a glass of water for water, and you can have a candle for fire. So to me, that is the basis. Those are the bases or the basic things that you need 
for your altar work. Um, I will one day do a, a more extended video on how to use your altar because you can use your altar as more of a shrine for where your ancestors and have photos and things like that. Or it could be for a certain deity like um, Mary or Oshun or, or Shango or Ganesh or Shiva or any of these deities. Or it could just be, like I said, a space for your sacred practice, whether that's praying, meditation, or divination. So, yes. Now on like the fourth-ish topic of altar work, there is a lot of stigma around altars and different religions not believing in them and whatever the case may be. I'm not going to give them that much space or energy in this video, but I do have to address it or I feel like I need to address it because so many, so many times I've come, come across people that believe that altars are really bad or whatever, but deep inside of our being, like our ancestors exist. And if you look around your house or if you, the next time you go to someone's house or the next time you go inside a church or anything, you will see an altar somewhere. And most of the time, this altar is for a deity. Let's say if you're in a Catholic church, this is Mary or one of the saints. If you're in a Christian church, you will see, you will go into the church and down the middle of the aisle, you see a cross or, or even the pulpit for the pastor. And you have two bouquets of flowers or two things next to it, um, sometimes even candles or whatever. And the reality is, is that is an altar. Sometimes you go into someone's house and they say that, oh, it's just their, their aesthetic. But to me, deep down inside, spirit is manifesting the altars that they want in their house. And typically that is an altar of themselves. And you have a picture of them with two smaller pictures of them with maybe two candles hanging be beside it or something. Um, so yeah, check for those things the next time that you go somewhere and you'll see that altars exist everywhere in our society and don't be afraid to use them don't be afraid to invite a certain intention into your house when you create them um it's just a different way of mindful living and spiritual connection so i hope that this video was helpful to you and until next time stay beautiful and if you would like to join the royal house of azar leave a crown emoji in the comments or leave me any other tips or or ideas that you have for videos or even for your altar. I know that I didn't cover everything in this video, but I just wanted to put some information out there. Gros bisous. Stay beautiful.